Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, solving a nonlinear list square problem, specifically uh, Gauss Newton approach. Before we start, let's uh, review uh, linear list square. So, in linear list square, we have a bunch of data and uh, we try to fit a line or plane or hyperplane in them. So, we have a bunch of uh, linear equation in the form of uh, ax equal to b or 0. So, if uh, right hand side is not 0, we can just simply multiple both sides by a transpose, so we get a square matrix, and then uh, multiply both sides by inverse of this uh, uh, matrix, and uh, we find the x. If the other side is zero, we cannot do that, so we uh, compute the SVD of uh, matrix A, and the last columns of uh, V transpose, the last matrix in the uh, SVD uh, decomposition are are the uh, null space of the a uh, so that's the answer for uh, uh, x uh, but not every uh, problem is linear uh, sometimes we have nonlinear problems so imagine we have a <coughs> function uh, m function uh, form of uh, g of x uh, x is a mapping from r n to R, so x, uh, x has n dimensions and we have m of them so we have like m observation or m data or sample or whatever and uh, we want to find the parameters for every g such that the distance between uh, uh, every uh, g function and uh, its observation or sample data are going to be minimized so I can imagine g is a uh, um, function for uh, uh, camera projection and y is the uh, pixel value that we have so we want to find the parameters for uh, camera projection such that um, the uh, distance between the projection and actual point in the image is minimized so we call a new function r uh, r stands for residual and we want to make them uh, as small as possible for every uh, data that we have. So we define a new function and uh, the, the uh, function is a uh, second norm of uh, R. So we try to minimize the F. Uh, we can also write R as a vector, all these uh, uh, functions. And uh, obviously you can uh, see that uh, this is just a dot product of this vector transpose multiple by itself. Okay, uh, so now f uh, gets x, which has n dimensions, and uh, map it to uh, uh, rm. So it's uh, a mapping from n to m. Okay, uh, let's uh, see how can we uh, uh, calculate the gradient of f. So we use a chain rule uh, because um, r is not direct function of the x. r is a function of g, and then uh, g is a function of x. So <coughs> we have to use a chain rule: two multiplied by one over two, uh, uh, multiplied by a derivative, multiplied by r i. So uh, if we just extend this uh, sigma, we have uh, r one, r two, r three to r m. So 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 is we cancel it each other. So we have derivative of uh, r relative to uh, r1 relative to x1, x2 to xn. Then uh, for r2, again derivative of r2 relative to x1, x2, xn until uh, uh, the last one, rn. So if we just rewrite this in a matrix form, we have uh, uh, this matrix multiplied by this. Well, this is, uh, based on our definition, this is R, R. And if you look at this, this is a, a, a transpose of a Jacobian, because Jacobian, every row was uh, first output relative to uh, all the parameters. And you can see here it's uh, the column, so it's exactly J transpose. Okay, so if we assume that uh, our eyes are linear, or we uh, estimate them by some linear function, like uh, using first-order uh, Taylor series, let's just assume that. Uh, 
what will happen to our uh, 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 gra uh, gradient and Hessian matrix. So uh, if we uh, approximate it by a first order Taylor series, uh, or a function is linear actually, we can approximate it at any point. So we can approximate at point zero and uh, the Jacobian is a fixed number. It's not a uh, function. So all this value is gonna be fixed value because uh, if it's linear, it's gonna be the derivative gonna be every, uh, the same everywhere. Multiple by uh, X. So this is a J multiple by X. And J is a fixed uh, matrix. So the uh, according to this, what we com just computed here, the derivative gonna be uh, the gradient gonna be J transpose multiple by R, which is uh, this, and the second uh, derivative uh, gonna be just coefficient of x, which is J T J. Okay, but we know that the R I's are not uh, linear. So if we just approximate it by a linear function, uh, the linearization depends on points, so it's not same everywhere. So it's g of x uh, transpose multiplied by rx, because uh, as I said, when you approximate a function by the linear function, it's very depend it's, it's it depend on the point that you linearize it. It's not fixed everywhere, and so we have a g of x. It's not a fixed number; it's a function now. And the uh, second order gradient, or the Haitian matrix, it's going to be, uh, again, this plus uh, this. And you can just uh, take a derivative of this and uh, find it yourself. But this is usually pretty small, and we can uh, just neglect it and uh, can overlook it. So uh, we have uh, uh, gradient and the Haitian. So if we... Uh, uh, review what we had in the Gauss-Newton uh, method for finding a uh, minimum of a function. Uh, if you don't know uh, where do we get this, you can have a look at my other video. I explained it. Where, where do we, did we get this? So it's an iterative approach. We start from a point, and uh, the next point is going to be a, a second order uh, derivative of function inverse multiple by a gradient of the function. And what we just calculated here are uh, gradient and the second order gradient or the Haitian matrix <coughs> if data has more than one dimension. If we just plug these two uh, here, you can see that the next point, uh, we iteratively start from point Xn. We compute Jacobian transpose multiple by uh, Jacobian. Then we compute the inverse for that specific point multiplied by Jacobian inverse, multiplied by value of the function on that point. And uh, we get the next point, and this is something we iteratively uh, do until we uh, reach the minimum. Thank you.